Hello again, this is John Ballantry with another tarot video. So, I think we all know that it's very easy to make things difficult for ourselves, right? You know, and this is particularly true, I think, with reading tarot cards. Um, so I'm sure, like, somebody asks you a question, you pick a card and you look at it. What do I do? What does it mean? I have no idea what to do with this particular card, no idea what it could mean. But you have to say something, so maybe you sort of remember something that you read about the meaning or the apparent meaning of the card. But it's a bit like that meaning is in your mind and it's over here. So you're no longer looking at the card where the answer is, but you're sort of over here and then the information from over here flies back to the card itself. So it's awkward and it's really not comfortable. And you probably find yourself wishing you could actually read the card and make sense of it and not get stuck. So, um, I think it's possible to, be, to become comfortable and um, let's talk about improvement and making ourselves better readers. Two points I want to make first. One is that um, if you're interested, I'm putting together an online course that will take you from thinking about buying a deck or thinking about learning the tarot to actually doing a reading. Right? It will be complete and comprehensive. The second thing is I'm putting together a members only site so people who bought the, tar the tarot course, the home study course or who buy it in the future, there's going to be a site where there's going to be audio, video and text showing you how to read better and how to, how to make more sense of cards um, but it's only for people to buy the course and if you buy the course you get member free membership to this particular site. The other thing is, um, back to this particular video, if you want to participate later, you should stop in a moment and get yourself a pen and paper or something to write on because there's a sort of interactive bit towards the end and it's better to have the paper now uh, so you don't need to stop. So, assuming that, um, that you're back and you've got your pen and paper, let's say somebody, say, a friend of yours says, I just broke up with whoever, the boyfriend, the girlfriend. So what are you going to do? You can be sympathetic and friendly and, you know, reassuring and say, well, you know, there's other people you meet and um, it's sad, but that's life and that kind of thing happens. So you can be friendly and sympathetic and that's okay, but it really doesn't help the person that much to learn about how to get the most out of relationships or um, how to find a new person or how to conduct the next relationship better and not make the same mistakes that maybe they made before more than once. So you can help the person by asking them questions. So maybe they tell you, okay, I just broke up with somebody. And so you might say, okay, do you, do you actually love, them, love whoever it is? And they may say, um, yes, I really do. And so you say, well, what is it? That about the other person that you admired or that you loved that much. And so you can sort of explore the relationship so the person ends up after a five minute conversation with a much better understanding of what that relationship was or what they were looking for, what was missing, what they need to do to replace what wasn't there, what they need to do to um, improve a basic starting point. Or they may say, well, I used to love him, but you know, in the last couple of months I got kind of bored. So that that is useful and helpful for the questioner because they know that, okay, there's been an upset, there's been a breakup, but at the same time, when they think about it, when they're clear in their mind, they're not that bothered, right? So there's something about asking questions to, to put the questioner in a stronger position to understand what has happened, what's going on now and how they can set things up in the future so they can have what they actually want, which I think is important, that people get what they want instead of taking second best or thinking that, you know, I don't deserve happiness or whatever it happens to be. So, back to tarot cards, because I think so some people like to, to create spreads for particular questions, and I don't. I think it's a waste of time. But people like to do this, so they come up with a bunch of questions. So this card's going to show the past, and this card's going to show um, subconscious influences, and this card's going to show 
the other person's subconscious fears and all that kind of stuff. Um, if, if this is your taste, fine. I just, it's not my taste. So, the thing about creating a spread like that is that you may find that um, you turn the card for the subconscious fears and you, the reader, have no idea what to do with it. You don't know what it means, you don't know what it's trying to tell you. And that makes you, the reader, look bad because you come up with the question and you're the one who's actually interpreting the answer. Or it could be that you turn the card about the past experiences and the question really doesn't want to talk about the past. Or, or you know, so there's lots of things can go wrong if you come up with a spread and uh, choose cards and then turn them over. But let's say the question is, uh, am I going to meet somebody in the next six months because I just broke up with this other person? So while you're shuffling, you're the reader of shuffling, what you do is you think of questions that, that might be useful to ask, to put the person, the questioner, in a stronger position to deal with what's going on now and what's going to be coming up in the future. So you might be shuffling and it's about relationships, so you might think, okay, it might be useful to know what about past relationships, right? Because if, if past relationships have been good, then the person's optimistic probably for the future. But if past relationships have been bad and they always end up badly, you know, maybe there's something the person ought to know about so that that kind of stuff doesn't happen again or doesn't keep happening. Or maybe you want to know what's, what's the person looking for in a partnership or what does, what does the person not want to have to deal with. So if you, if you have questions like this that make sense for the question, that might give useful information. If you get a, a, a bunch of questions in your head, it means that when you stop shuffling and turn the card, you're going to know what the card means. Or you're going to make a connection between thoughts that are fresh in your mind and the picture on the card, and you're going to be able to say something that makes sense for the questioner. So you may shuffle and you turn and you get the three cups upside down, and you immediately say, okay, what you don't want is somebody who's over-emotional or somebody who flies off the handle for no good reason or somebody you say to them, give some kind of criticism and they burst into tears or they get completely overwhelmed by it for no good reason because, you know, all you were saying was, you know, maybe you want to try this, do this differently. There's no need to, you know, dissolve into tears. So the thing is, instead of turning the three of cups and thinking, okay, what does this card mean? And thinking, up, okay, over here it says blah, blah, blah. You're looking at the card, it's sort of in the moment and it's fresh. So it can be that you come up with it, that uh, uh, you put together a question you hadn't thought of during the shuffling. You, you just sort of, you're going to know what to say and how to get the conversation going. And just because you, you, you want to know and because you've been thinking about it. So, um, uh, let's say the person agrees that yes, they, they can seem to be attracted by, by um, over-emotional people. Maybe the natural question to ask is, how do I deal, how should I deal with these people? In because I'm probably going to meet somebody like that again. So you pick a card, but you know, you're looking at it to, to answer the question, how should the person deal with these individuals? And then depending on the card itself, you're going to get the beginnings of an answer. So that is how to, how to shuffle and deal cards and put together answers. Because what you, the reader, are doing is thinking on behalf of the questioner and coming up with useful questions or questions whose answer will be useful to help the person deal better with that with the situation that they're inquiring about. So uh, let's take another question. The question is, am I going to get a promotion? And I'm going to give you 30 seconds and you're going to write down, imagine you were shuffling. So you're shuffling and thinking, am I going to get a promotion? What might be useful questions to ask? So I'm going to count to 30 seconds. And so starting now, the question is, am I going to get promotion? Write down as many 
useful, potentially useful questions as you can over the next 30 seconds. So beginning now. One. That's about 10. I'm counting my fingers here. That's about 20. Okay, that's 30. Pencils down, as you say. Okay, so you've, you've written down, some people will have written down maybe just one question, and that's okay. It's only because you've never done this before. It doesn't mean that you're not intelligent, okay, so forget that kind of stuff. Because the thing is, if you try this tomorrow or the next day or next week, you know what is expected, what you want is a, a list of questions. You'll come up with more questions than you got right now, or interestingly, you come up with better questions. Because it's easy to think the first thing that comes to mind is, is correct, it's good. But often it's when you think something over and refine it a bit and improve it that you end up with something that's actually better than your first thought. So, um, what I'm going to suggest now is that you, if you can, get your deck of cards and imagine that somebody's opposite you and they want to know, am I going to get promotion? And you've been shuffling and you've come up with one or two or three or four questions that might provide useful information. So imagine that you've done your shuffling. Take the top card, turn it over and make the connection between the questions you've been asking yourself that the, the question doesn't know about and the picture on the card and give an answer or explain something to this imaginary questioner. And then pick the next card and the next one and practice like this on your own. And what it means is that when you've got a real person asking you real questions, you're going to be much more comfortable with cards, with doing a reading, knowing that you know what you're doing, you know what you're about, and that you're going to be able to um, figure out an answer. Even if you haven't seen that particular card, in connection with that particular question, right? So you're going to find somebody wants to know about relationships. You turn over coins. You don't think money. You know that it doesn't work like that. Or you're going to find that your imagination comes into play, and your sensitivity, and your understanding of cards is going to come into play, and you're going to be able to make sense of the question and give a decent answer. So that's it for the moment. If your comments or questions my email blltr at yahoo.com uh, send me an email and we'll take it from there thanks very much